Okay, so as promised, um, the examples so that you'll know if you were doing your homework correct. So number one says calculate the electric potential difference at point A located 10 centimeters away from a charge of negative 20 microcoulombs. So you have a charge here that's negative 20 microcoulombs and point A is 10 centimeters away. So we'll call this A. And this distance is 10 centimeters. So we want the electric potential difference. So we're looking for V. So V at A is equal to KQ A over R. So 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Q is 20 microcoulombs, so 20 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And R is 10 centimeters, or 0.1 of a meter. And so when we calculate this, 2 times 9 is 18, divided by 1 is 18. Uh, whoops, 20 is a negative, I think, yeah, so this is a negative, sorry. So you'll get negative 1.80 times 10 to the 6 volts. So that's for part A, so that's VA. Okay, that's the potential difference at point A. So now B wants to know what's the electric potential difference at point B located only 5 centimeters away. So B is actually closer to the charge. And so we do VB is equal to KQB over R. So 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Still negative 20 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And this time the R is 0 0.05 meters. Dividing by a number that's half as big should give us an answer that's twice as big. So VB is going to be negative 3.6 times 10 to the 6 volts. Now remember the negative means that you didn't have to do any work to get the charge there. Remember the charge that usually we think of it as a positive. So it's telling us that you would, you, the, you would like, a charge would be happier at B than it would be at A. Okay, so in the C says, what's the potential difference? So what's the potential difference between A and B? And so when it says between two points, they're looking for delta B. What's the potential difference at A? They're just looking for V at A. But if they're asking for the potential difference between two points, you're looking for delta B. And delta V will be final minus initial. So assuming you started at A, and went to B, then final will be B, and initial will be A. And so final was 3.6 times 10 to the 6 volts. Initial was negative 1.8 times 10 to the 6 volts. Minus a minus is like adding. So the delta V will be negative 1.8 times 10 to the 6 volts. What does that mean? It means that we didn't have to do any work to get it to move from A to V, that the field did the work. And so the question says, which point is higher potential? The answer is going to be A. And it's going to be A because things will move from higher potential to lower potential on their own. Things will move from higher energy to lower energy. They never want to be in a high state of energy. It's no different than you, right? If you had the option of standing up in your living room uh, or lying down on the couch, you're going to lie down on the couch. You're automatically going to go to the lower point of energy. It's the same here. So B must be the lower point of energy because the field will take it there. If you wanted to move it from B to A, you would have to do work. Just like if we wanted to get you off the couch to stand up again, we would have to do work. So the point that you have to do work to get it to is the point of higher energy. And the point that it goes on its own, that's the point of lower energy. This negative tells us it's going to go to B on its own. That means B is the point of lower energy and A is the point of higher energy. Example 2. Find the total electric potential difference at the fourth corner of a square whose sides are 1.5 meters long. So you have charges at three of the four corners, I believe. And the sides are 
1.5 meters, 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters. Okay, um, and it says to, to five microcoulombs, and because it's a square, it doesn't really matter which one you put where. So five microcoulombs, eight microcoulombs, negative six microcoulombs, and it wants you to find the electric potential difference up here. Okay, so this length is the hypotenuse, 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared, which is 2.25, and then take the square root, and I think you get 2.121, and that might be repeating. Okay, so if I call this dude number one, the first one that was given, this dude number two, because it was the second one, this one number three, I could even put it in the things, Okay, and then we'll find the potential at uh, the fourth point. So our first step is to find the potential from number one to that point. So V14 will equal KQ1 over R. So nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times five to the negative six coulombs. And our R for number one is 1.5 meters. So V1 at 4 will be, I think it's, how many zeros is that? 1, 2, I think it's 30,000. 30,000 volts. Okay? Now you do number 2. So V2 at point 0.4, KQ2 over R, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Q2 is 8 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And the R this time is 2.121, etc. And you get a V24 to be not as pretty, 33941.1255, etc. volts. V3, ah, my paper is moving, at 4 KQ3 over. Uh, R, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared, negative 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and once again the R is 1.5 meters. And so when you do this, you get a V3 to be negative 36,000 volts. Okay, so the question this time wants the total electric potential from the four of them. Up here it wanted the difference between the two, but down here it wants the total. And electric potential is a, a scalar. So to get the total, all you have to do is V1 plus V2 plus V3. No components, no drawing in the vectors, just 30,000 volts plus 33,941.1255 volts, plus a negative 36,000 volts. And so when you do that, you end up with a V total of 27,941.1255 volts. Isn't voltage easy? No components like fields and forces. Just find the three of them the same way we would have if we were looking for fields and forces. But then instead of worrying about components, just add them up. If it works out to be positive, it means that at that point if, um, you would need to do work on a charge to get it there. If it work out, works out to be negative, it would mean the charge would want to go there on its own. And remember, we always define it as a positive charge because of the convention. It would be a positive test charge we'd be moving there. Okay? So try your homework ones. Um, if you get really good, feel free to keep going and do 47, 48, 49. Um, example 3 on the back actually is a decent challenge if you want it, and it's where we'll start on Monday. There are two charges, and we're going to run out of time here. But they're a distance 12 centimeters apart, and it wants you to find the point where V1 plus V2 equals zero. In other words, KQ1 over R plus KQ2 over R will equal zero. See if you can do it, okay?